Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Throop. I'm the chair of the history department. And although I'm bummed not to be able to talk to you at History Day or Admitted Students Day, I'm glad to have a chance to talk to you a little bit right now. I hope you and your family are doing well and hanging in there. Um, today, I'm basically going to talk to you about two things. Uh, the first is academics, and the second um, is outcomes, which is what we call life after graduation. So, um, academics. To begin with, at the Ursinus College History Department, we will challenge you. Um, we have a groundbreaking new curriculum that we developed about 18 months ago that we're very proud of. Um, we have tons of interdisciplinary connections in our courses. We embrace student-centered active learning, um, and we really ask you to dive right into research and digital skills from the beginning. But we don't just challenge you. We also provide a lot of support. So all of the faculty work one-on-one -on -one with students intensively. We also have the only non-STEM help room on campus. It's called the History Help Room. It's staffed by peer tutors, um, in other words, older history majors that have a lot of experience. So you can get help, direct help from your faculty, but you also have a lot of support from the History Help Room. And lastly, when we're thinking about academics um, at our sinus, we also try and make sure that you're making the most of all your opportunities outside of formal classes. We want you to do an internship. We want you to study abroad. We want you to do an externship. Um, we want you to have jobs and be active in um, extracurricular activities. Uh, we really value collaboration, teamwork, and leadership in our department. And we try and help our majors um, develop those skills as best they can. OK, let's talk about outcomes. As I said, outcomes is what happens after graduation. And lots of people are rightly concerned about that, right? Um, what will you do with a history major is a very common um, thing that I hear. So first of all, 90% of our majors are in full-time employment or full-time graduate school within a year after graduation. And that's the, that's the first point at which we do that check-in. So um, that's the earliest point at which we see that number, which is great. Um, secondly, we try and provide direct guidance to our majors in terms of thinking about what comes after graduation, basically starting in their second year. So we ask majors to do our theories and methods course as sophomores. And in that course, um, a third of the course is devoted to thinking about skills, uh, values, priorities, and how those things might translate into life after graduation. We follow that up in our capstone seminars with, again, spending third of, a third of our time focused on um, professional communication, organizational culture, networking, um, et cetera, et cetera. Speaking of networking, um, we have a really committed alumni network. Uh, and every year we have a history specific group of, of alums who come back to campus. They do a speed networking session with students. Um, we're also actively involved with the Office of Career and Postgraduate Development in arranging a lot of other events and um, connecting current students with alumni who can help them out. Um, if you go to our web pages, you'll find a video about careers for history majors. You'll find some information about career trends nationally for history majors. Uh, in terms of our history alumni, there's sort of five big categories of employment that we can identify. Um, over the last 10 year period. The first of those is what I would call education and learning. This includes alums who become teachers, but also alums that go on to work um, for companies like the Princeton Review, or that are involved in learning in some other non-traditional environment. Um, the second category is museums and public history. A lot of our alumni go on to work in museums or to do public history work in one way or another. Um, the third, and this is a pretty big category, is government and nonprofit work. We have a lot of alumni who either want to work directly in government, whether that's local, state, federal, or who want to be involved in nonprofits um, one way or another. Um, our fourth big category is law. We do have a fair number of majors who go to law school and have successful legal careers. Um, and hopefully you can view a video on the pre-law program at Ursinus because it's pretty cool. And the last category, category five, uh, is actually the biggest category. I'm calling it something like media innovation and information management. These are folks like 
Julia Globerman, who's the manager of content information for Dow. Um, these are folks like Nick Roberts, who's a metadata analyst for American Express. So they're taking their skills um, and using them in different ways in the media um, and in what we might call the information world. Okay, now how about grad school? That's a question we often get. We actually have a proven track record of grad school acceptances um, with money. And the funding part matters, right? Because if, if you don't get funding to go to graduate school, um, then it may not be the right move for you. Let me talk you through some of the acceptances we've had in the last five years or so. So first of all, we've had quite a number of acceptances with funding for masters of arts degrees. Um, Andrew Williams studied Byzantine studies at Oxford University. Um, Katie Lowe is doing history and museum studies at the University of North Carolina. Joe McCook is doing public history at Temple. Uh, we have also have a number of majors who have gone on to earn masters of sciences degrees. For example, Bridget Winters did an MS in human rights at University Co College Dublin in Ireland. Um, Joe Wachowski is doing an MS in international relations at John Hopkins Center for Chinese and American Studies. Um, and I knew I was going to blank a name at some point, forgive me. Um, Another alum went on to do a master's of sciences in public policy and an MBA in nonprofit management at the University of Brandeis. Okay, uh, quite a number of our students increasingly get MLIS degrees. The MLIS stands for Masters of Library and Information Science. Um, and these are the folks that go on to become metadata analysts and um, data governance professionals. Um, we've had alums get in with funding at Drexel and again, University of North Carolina. Lastly, as I already alluded, we have quite a number of majors who go on to law school. Um, we've had recent acceptances with funding at the College of William and Mary, the University of Connecticut, Boston University, Marquette, and Temple. And last but not least, we do have a few, a small number of students who secure acceptances with funding to PhD programs. So right now I can think of one alum who's completing a PhD in medieval studies at the University of Minnesota with full funding, another who's doing a PhD in American studies at the University of New Mexico with full funding, and a third who's doing a PhD in historical anthropology at the College of William and Mary with full funding. So they get out there. I need to wrap this up because our admissions team would like this video to be short. If you have further questions, please check out our web pages, check out um, the PowerPoint that we're making for Admitted Students Day, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would be happy to answer questions and talk more by email or by phone call or video call. Lastly, I am sorry that my cats have not made an appearance in this video, um, but if we have a video call, I will make sure at least one of them shows up. Take good care.